do i like to provide you with a little bit of background okay so we're going to talk a little bit about what fibroids are just an image of a womb with fibroids but just to put it in context what we're talking about we want to start by defining what a fibroid is a fibroid is a benign growth or you might hear it referred to as a tumor and um, that happens in the womb generally um, women of reproductive age so women who can still have kids fibroids are benign growths that affect the womb very very common much more common than you might think particularly because many women have fibroids but because they haven't got symptoms it doesn't cause any problems so they may not even realize that they have fibroids and you would only find out if you were doing a scan looking for something else and say oh actually she's got fibroids and remember that fibroids can go grow to different sizes from the very tiny to of course the very large ones now of course we're having this we're doing this discussion today because fibroids can be symptomatic that is they can cause problems okay but before i talk about a few of the symptoms where do fibroids how do they grow where do they come from now we know they develop from the womb's muscle this image that i've shared with you what you can see on the screen is the womb and the fibroids like that one or that one so all these bumps that you're seeing the bulkiness of the womb is because of the fibroid and what you're seeing has developed from the, the muscle of the womb okay so fibroids grow from the womb muscle and depend mainly depend on estrogen they mainly depend on estrogen in your body or in a woman's body to grow so estrogen the hormone estrogen is a big influence okay but not all types of estrogen the estrogen that your body generates that your body produces different from the estrogen you're getting in the pill combined pill for example okay however we also know that other factors are related to fibroids developing but we don't know exactly how so it's still a bit of a mystery for scientists and researchers we're not very sure still doing studies about this okay now the other thing that you should know is that fibroids we've said they grow they're coming from the womb but they grow in different aspects in different locations within the womb you can divide the womb into the very top layer the middle layer and the inner layer so if you think about it your skin can be the inner layer if you wear a blouse that's let's that let's look at that as the middle layer or the or the muscle layer of the fibroid and if you put a jacket on top of that so those three layers from your skin to the blouse to the jacket just imagine i know this is a really strange way of describing it but i'm just trying to explain to you how the womb is formed in layers okay so fibroids can grow from the muscle and they can go into the inner layer that's the inner cavity where the baby stays or the fibroid can remain within the wall or can grow into the outer layer okay so fibroids can grow outside the outer layer okay a muscle uh, from the muscle of the, of the womb but it's going to the outer layer within the muscle of the womb and a growth from the muscle of the womb but enters into the inner layer or the inner cavity of the womb so that's how fibroids move. what about symptoms of fibroids the common symptoms there are quite a few and they can vary from one woman to the next what that means is that two women may have fibroids and may have symptoms from fibroids but they have different types of symptoms so generally painful periods abnormal bleeding abnormal bleeding from the womb abnormal vaginal bleeding okay so fibroids can cause painful periods heavy periods bleeding in between periods okay so i wanted to make sure that you're quite clear in your head it can cause abnormal bleeding what kind of abnormal bleeding it can make your period heavy it can make the heavy periods painful and it can also cause bleeding different from the periods and happen in between so fibroids can do all that i've mentioned pain fibroids can cause pain in your pelvis so the area just above your thighs and higher up in the abdomen because remember fibroids and um, a lot of it is about the bulk of the fibroid okay a lot of it is about how big the fibroid is so it does it, a lot of the effects that happen because of the fibroid is because this size this bulk is pushing other things within your um, abdomen and pelvis pushing on the ovary pushing against the bowel pushing against the bladder and as it even grows bigger goes out into the abdomen can start pushing against the um, the nerves around your back pushing ar around different things and causing pain okay related to that i've just mentioned how the fibroid can push against organs if it pushes against the bowel for example it can block the bowel and cause constipation or it can push against the bladder the fibroid can push remember that the womb itself is sitting between the bladder in front and the 
anus and rectum and bowel behind so if this fibroid grows and makes the womb so large the wound pushes against the bladder it might cause problems with urinating so these are some of the symptoms and back pain i've mentioned if it's pressing against the nerves many different things can happen with fibroids a lot of this i talk about in videos dedicated to the subject i talk about symptoms of fibroids the causes of fibroids please go and check out the most popular playlist of videos for on fibroid it's on this channel so look for fibroid fibroid knowledge playlist i will put the link in the description if i get the chance and remember i'll just show it to you later on on this stream but if you want to learn much more about this go and check out that playlist i go into a lot of detail in individual videos okay now let's talk about who experiences fibroids why is it that one person gets it and the other person doesn't so let's look at age first of all fibroids are very rare before puberty so we don't fibroids are not a childhood problem if you like i think that's the way to put it i wouldn't expect to see fibroids in somebody who is 11 or 12 they're very rare okay before puberty however you can have fibroids in teens not so common okay very quick to say not so common but it can happen in fact i came across a really interesting case study of a late of a girl age 14 who had fibroids horrendous heavy painful bleeding and then eventually after the test done she had fibroids so it can happen it's not very common i am um, in people in young girls who are in their teens fibroid is much commoner in older ladies in older women and most often we diagnose it between the ages of 30 to 40 years um, of age and you find that the um how the rate at which it happens is a lot a lot higher in women as they grow into their 70s into their 80s you find a lot more diagnosed uh, diagnosed with fibroids now what are the risk factors for fibroids really important to know this we're still trying to learn about this condition so many things that we don't yet know but we have said that there is a relationship between fibroids growing and developing and estrogen and that's estrogen that your body produces not estrogen that you're taking that's coming from the outside this is estrogen that your body is generating or developing some of these risk factors that have been linked to fibroids that is people are most more likely to develop fibroids if they're in these categories number one somebody has her uh, gets into puberty early okay we call it menarche when a woman starts her first menstrual period so a woman who has and you know for, for girls it can be different ages some girls get it as early as 10 some as early as 8 some later 14 it varies okay but what we found is that those who enter menarche who start their periods earlier tend to be more at risk of having fibroids now remember this is not categorical that everybody with early who starts periods early ends up with fibroids no we're just saying that an association there's the link you're, you're likely to find that if somebody has fibroids possibly she may have started her period early and remember we're looking at frequency it's not exact so again we're not saying that every woman who has fibroids started her period early i hope i'm clear in that okay the other risk factor associated with fibroid is a woman who hasn't had children so she's not been pregnant she's not had children she's not been pregnant and again that has to do with hormones because when one, when one is pregnant normal hormone production is interrupted you either have more hormones reproductive hormones being produced for the nine months or you have that interruption doesn't happen then there might be a chance that fibroids develop more in that kind of scenario now it doesn't mean that every single person who's never had who's never been pregnant then will develop fibroids no it, we're just saying that there has been an observation that women who have fibroids tend to be more in that category who have not been pregnant before and i know you're going to say well could it be because the fibroid didn't allow them to get pregnant fair enough i get you i understand what you're saying and we're going to talk a bit about that as well but this is just one of the observations about the risk factors that is the conditions that make somebody probably more at risk of developing fibroids so we've talked about starting periods early we've talked about not getting pregnant or having children at all the next one is being overweight or obese obesity okay um, and that one again has to do with hormones because the studies indicate to us that people who are overweight have higher levels of estrogen that estrogen word again and its association with fibroids next is women who start 
their menopause later or women who go into the menopause later commonly we, we, when we talk about menopause you're talking about from the age of 45 some women will start to experience the perimenopause some might even start earlier but on average you're looking at about 48 going up to 50 52 years for women to enter into the menopause what of a woman who gets into it later maybe after 52 or 53 when she completely stops having her period so we're saying that women towards that later end of the spectrum are the ones who may be more likely to have fibroids there's also a family history of fibroids so what that means is that if um, there are other ladies in the family whether it's sisters or mothers or you know female cousins and so on who have fibroids then whoever they're related to could be more at risk of developing fibroids now last but not the least risk factor is being of african descent like me okay that is that has been identified actually as the most significant risk factor that you can't do anything about because you know you can't do anything about your background can you but what we've observed is that fibroids tend to affect more africans african americans afro caribbeans or whichever way people of african descent tend to experience fibroids more so it's more often diagnosed and in them they tend to have more severe symptoms we're still doing the studies we're not really clear on why this is the case okay so that's a little bit of a whistle stop tour about fibroids, what they are, who gets them, why, what causes it and so on, and symptoms.